The hopper is an incredibly successful style of stillwater dry fly. In this short video, I'll be tying the red version. Okay then, as normal, the first step is to run the tying thread on just behind the eye, using a few turns to lock that loose end in place before trimming it off. That done, carry the thread down the shank, close turns, Keep it on going until it reaches a position opposite the barb. The rib for the hopper comprises a length of fine pearl tinsel, but in order to protect it, it's a good idea to first catch in a length of fine monofilament. Next, take a spool of fine pearl tinsel and just remove a couple of inches. That done, offer it up to the hook and catch it in the same place as the monofill was caught in. The body is red seal's fur, so a pinch is taken, teased out a little bit, and offered up to the thread and dubbed on with a simple finger and thumb twist. Keep twisting until a thin rope has been created. That done. Take it right to the bend and then begin winding it back up the shank in close turns. Keep winding it up towards the eye until almost the whole of the shank has been covered. Just leave a small gap behind the eye now for the, for the hackle. So with the body in place, now take the length of fine pearl tinsel and begin to wind it over the body in evenly spaced turns. They don't have to be too close together. Four or five for a hook of this size is ample. Just allow it to bed in into the material. That done. Hold the loose end and just secure it with two or three turns of thread. And that uh, waist end can be trimmed off. With the pearl rib in place, take hold of the fine monofilament nylon and begin to wind it over the body, but this time in the opposite spiral. This means that each turn of the monofilament will cross that of the pearl tinsel. This will protect it. And then just fix it in place. And then trim off the loose end. Being a hopper, this pattern has legs made from six strands of knotted pheasant tail. So first, we take the pheasant tail and tear off a few fibers. That done, we take the first strand and we put a simple overhand knot in it, quite close to the tip, and then just draw it tight. With one leg formed in this way, repeat the process until six have actually been created. Next, divide the six into two equal bunches of three and take one of the bunches and offer it up to the hook and catch it in place just behind the eye. Now take the remaining three legs and offer them up to the other side of the hook and catch them in place. Two or three turns of thread. Just position them so they sweep back along the body. Then take the scissors, trim off the waist ends and add further tight thread wraps to secure them. So with the legs in place, the next step is to add the hackle. Now this is just a normal brown cock hackle. It doesn't have to be anything special. It's prepared by simply taking the hackle and stripping off the waist fibers from the base and then trimming the bare hackle stem to length. It's offered up to the hook and caught in place with a couple of turns of thread. Grab the hackle by its tip and simply wind on two or three turns. Keep winding the hackle until it reaches the eye. Then secure the tip in place with a couple of turns of thread. And simply take the scissors and trim off the tip. 
that done, stroke the fibers back and just create a small head. Then cast off the thread with the three or four turn whip finish, drawing it tight before taking the scissors again and simply trimming off the thread. To complete the fly, take the scissors and just trim off a few of the hackle fibers that are projecting under the thorax. This allows the fly to sit nice and low in the surface film. And there it is, the red hopper.